true with me and us. I mean, we started with really nothing, you know. I mean, I, he said, I started with nothing and I've got most of it left. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota. A state that's an afterthought for most people not from the Midwest. In my case, as a Miami kid, this is an entirely different universe within mine altogether. So why am I here? Are you excited to go back or what? I'm pretty excited to see my family and just hang out. And yeah. It's chill, yeah. What are you expecting? Uh, honestly, not a whole lot. Like, nothing really new. Just, mm -hmm. I know we got a Taco Bell, I know we got a caribou, yeah, right. so. <laughs> That's in progress. I'm excited for some that. Some drama, some small town drama. <laughs> Maybe, it just depends. <laughs> depends who we see. <laughs> this is Morgan, my girlfriend of nearly a year, a person I live life with. Though we met in my city, her roots stem all the way back to a town of just under 5,000 people. For context, Kendall, the suburb of Miami I grew up in itself, is home to over 80,000 people. Though young, her journey has been like most of those who ultimately seek refuge in Miami, ever-changing and somewhat tumultuous in recent years. A gypsy-like odyssey that saw her hop from North Carolina to California, back to Minnesota, ultimately landing in the Sunshine State and, well, meeting this sharp-faced traveler. What piques my interest is the interplay between her ambition to seek a better, more grandiose life and her ties in an all-too-complicated yet eerily stereotypical Midwestern town. Why was she different than those she left behind, and how does it feel to return to what is seemingly a memento of her adolescence? The bike trail used to have um, railroad tracks, but now it doesn't, and I live just on the other side. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna name all the people who are at the gym right now. <laughs> This is Dairy Queen, here's the bank. Oh wait, they changed the name of the bank. Whoa. Also, I'm kind of there to meet the family. And of course, to make sure I don't make too big of an ass of myself. So I'll dial down my inappropriate sarcasm, do my best royal family member visiting a former colony act, and make sure everyone can see I have a full set of teeth and I ain't afraid to show it. So, as you might have guessed, this isn't a guide to the land of 10,000 lakes, but rather the story of how a native Minnesotan returns to a life she left in her rearview mirror. So if you're looking for me to tell you if toilets flush counterclockwise in St. Paul versus Minneapolis, or how hilly Duluth is, you're shit out of luck, amigo. I will say, however, there is a lot you could do that I kinda skimmed over while I was here. If in season, for example, you can go catch a Twins game. And though I wasn't allowed to really film in there because this show is about as low budget as a PBS broadcast, I did thoroughly enjoy it. Also, you can go to the upscale greater Minneapolis suburb of Excelsior and grab some drinks at Maynard's on, yes you guessed it, the lake. Definitely worth it. But of course, I am here for another reason. Northwest of the Twin Cities is Morgan's hometown of Sock Center. I know, you've never heard of it. And like so many small towns in America, the problems, though fewer in quantity, carry undoubtedly more weight. So how does it feel to be back here? Um, it feels pretty good. Feels good to see family again. How do you like being here? It's uh, it's interesting. I've never been here before. I've never been in this state. It's uh, it's nicer than you thought. Everyone's a lot nicer than I thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's peaceful. Everything's peaceful out here. You can just come out here whenever you want to, and like it's... always, like when you get your license, you pretty much just 
drive around Main Street, you go up and down Main. It's called doing the Main. The, uh, the birds are chirping. There's a, oh, look at him. He's so cute. Yeah, no reason. Um, when this is all grown up, actually, this is like uh, there's like cattails all over around here. So it's like green and like yellow, and the cattails have like a brown top. Mm -hmm. They're so cute. You took too long to come back, huh? No, actually, I think I waited <laughs> the perfect amount of time. Just enough to miss it a little bit. Exactly. Like, it's, yeah, you can't come too frequently because it's like, this just gets boring. Do you remember how to do this? Not really. You just pump your legs. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you are closer to being a kid than I am, so. Um, not by much. Okay, so you were talking to my grandma about what? Ah, wouldn't you like to know? I would love to Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I would love to know. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny. You're supposed to kick your feet out when you're forward and pull them back when you're going backwards. Uh, it's called uh, momentum. You get that oh, push shit. going. You're, you're oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, how are you? <laughs> how do you manage? I got it. Okay. Yeah, put that upper body to work. Well, that's why I work out. <laughs> I'm glad I caught that on camera. All settlements are built off hope. Hope for a new life, a better outcome than what you had previously. Fundamentally, the difference between which settlements grow and which stall is opportunity. Opportunity begets growth over time. So the choice for those who grow up in a town stunted by its inability to provide continuing opportunity is simple. Make the best of it, or seek what you perceive to be a greener pasture elsewhere. If you do stay, however, the trade-off for comfort and familiarity is the tiny and immersive bubble of a place where bad habits become a vicious cycle, and the inescapable ghosts of your past are never too far behind or from collective memory. Everyone has problems. But in a town like Sock Center, they're infinitely more tethered. So we signed up and you had little recipe cards. So you fill it out. Well, what kind of kids would you like? Well, boy, girl. Oh. Well, we don't care. Well, how about ethnicity? Well, we really don't care. Well, I was about to adopt uh, two Indian fellows the other day, but. Yeah. They... <laughs> well, yeah, but no, wait, wait, wait. Daughter, feather. No. Yeah, no, yeah, we're talking, we're talking dot. We're talking to dot. We want, I wanted a, yeah, I wanted a computer programmer. <laughs> Simply put, Terry Kreider is a legend. The Kreiders as a whole are legendary in this town. Terry, alongside wife Pat, did the impossible. Create a cohesive familial unit comprised of blood and adopted children that has now ballooned into 10 great grandchildren, as well as a platoon of siblings and extended branches. Aside from helping populate central Minnesota, the Criders have, despite the intricacies of small town living, navigated the waters and set an example that goes far beyond just importing black people to sock centers, so to speak. Though that in itself was no small feat. It's deeper than that. They are an irreplaceable block in the town's foundation. So what is life like in, in rural Minnesota? I like small town living. I've never needed um, 15 movie theaters, 40 grocery stores. Uh, you know, that's not a big thing to us. Quality of life is good. Uh, so so there was never sort of like a temptation to like move to like the bigger cities? When you come from a town, which I come from the next town north of here of like 3,000 people, uh, you don't need a big crowd of people. You're used to living with smaller numbers, right. you're not a you're never not a metro oriented. I don't like that rat race, the hamster wheel thing that 
uh, that I that I need to desire to live 50 miles out of the city, but I have to work there. So right, uh, right. I haven't felt that. Right. It's uh, there's less hectic hectic demands. Right. You know, the crowds and the this and that. And so so obviously you've adopted a lot of children, right? What was it like to adopt children of color and bring them into a town where it's majority white? We meet with this organization called Building Families. Like in a week, we get a call. We've got two boys in, in, uh, from Gary, Indiana in a, in a foster placement, uh, and would you be interested in them? I said, yeah, I think we would. So we drive down and we get these two American, black, yeah. three and four year old boys. And so just like that, we got into it. And, and then, <laughs> then, it became then, a thing. Th then we got Denise and Toronto, we got two more, then we got two more. And right. all of a sudden, the social worker, because everybody has one, said, you know, I'm a little reluctant to, you're bringing black American kids, boys, into a small t rural Minnesota town that's 99.99% .99 white. Yeah, yeah, I figured. And how do you think that'll fly? And I had a state job, so I thought, okay, I don't have a little business in town that everybody can blackball me. Right, yeah. So, you know, and say, oh, look at those bums. Yeah. What are they yeah. doing? They're gonna ruin the community. So, uh, I said, I said to her, I said, well, Pam, I said, here's the deal. I said, it's two boys. And I said, I'll just tell them, if you don't shut up, I'll get three more. And in 10 years, the whole basketball team will be black. And she started laughing and said, you're not gonna have any trouble. So she, she blessed it. So what does it mean for you and Pat to see how Morgan has grown and, and for her to come back and visit Sock Center and, and just be a different person than when she left? To us, it's fun to see her grow up and say, I'm not gonna be a small town kid, bail out, go to California, uh, just hit it at a bad stroke. Well, you know yourself, from that's not the place to be said, I'm gonna try the other side of the world and ended up in Miami. And so for us, it's a first uh, child, grandchild, that, that actually moved farther away than within the state of Minnesota. Everybody else is kinda here. Uh, so it's, it's fun. Fun fact, I love to cook. Been doing it since I was 16, messing around in the kitchen and watching copious hours worth of Tyler Florence and Jamie Oliver's shows. Because of that, I can cook my ass off and I won't be humble about it. So I've come up with an idea to endear the natives. Right, so I've been tasked with cooking a meal. Well, I wasn't tasked. I just thought I'd impress by cooking a meal for the family. This family right here. Family matters meets all in the family. So I thought of a few things that'd be nice and easy to make, but everyone's really gonna enjoy. So I went to the local meat market. I got three pounds of standing rib roast. I got three pounds of top loin. I'm gonna make pasta, Alfredo pasta, okay? It's gonna be really good, I hope. I hope they take me in, I hope they adopt me. These are my ingredients. Greek salad coming in hot, tomatoes, feta, onions, whole nine yards. Hopefully they like it. If they don't, well, I'll just never come back to Minnesota and I'll get dumped. What's the worst thing happen? On today's menu, an array of safe yet flavorful classics with some twists. A Cretan style salad named Dacos, that would be tomatoes, feta, oregano, onion, and a heaping amount of olive oil on crusty bread in case you were wondering. A smoky brat and colossal seared shrimp penne alfredo. And not to be outdone, a selection of two fine cuts. Standing rib roast with a chimichurri and a top loin with a horseradish aioli. Both seasoned, seared, and heartwarmingly juicy. It may not be their usual hot dish, but it's slapped. 
Looks like I'll be getting that honorary plaque at Mall of America any day now. Oh yeah, you betcha. After doing my finest Gordon Ramsay, it's time for Around the Sock in 80 Criters. Um, oh, my, well, my sister's um, old shop used to be in this building here, in that yellow building with the shingles on it. First up, and as a matter of principle on an unusually hot spring day, ice cream at the Purple Parlor. Perfect place to grab a cone, embrace your inner child, and maybe indulge in countless vintage-inspired sodas, excuse me, pops, graphically designed by hipsters on Canva. But the more places we stop by and family members I visit, the more apparent it is to me that there is a quality of life here that if done right, is remarkable. Far removed from the oftentimes superficial nature of a large city. Especially one like Miami where its restaurants are judged by how Instagrammable the bathroom is and not the quality of the dishes themselves. It may not be where I'd like to live, but its humility and reposeful setting is exactly what the soul so often yearns for. Night falls and reflection time is over. Time to get real small town with some drinks, some darts, some shit talking. My time in Minnesota has come to an end. But first, some unsettled and very necessary business. Right, so Morgan is pooped, tired as shit. We're about to board our flight in about an hour and a half. But before, before I do that, I wanted to get something that is like super minnesota -y, apparently. That's the Juicy Lucy burger. Basically a hamburger, but instead of cheese being on top, it's in between two burger patties, right? So apparently you like cut through it and it oozes cheese. Apparently it's really good. I don't know, she's never had one, right? And since we're never in Minnesota and we probably won't come back for a really long time, we're gonna try it out. Yeah. I would do that to me too if there was just a random tripod staring at me. <laughs> on a dining room table in an airport. Now, if trying molten cheeseburgers isn't your thing, or you've chosen to say goodbye to happiness altogether and became a vegan, there's a super random memorabilia shop dedicated to Minneapolis's very own androgynous icon, Prince. Yes, that's right. An entire shop dedicated to Prince. But since I don't live in the 80s and I don't find purple particularly appealing, I think I'm gonna pass on that and stuff my face instead. Right, great. So, we have copious amounts of ketchup, which Morgan appreciates. But without further ado, we got ourselves the juicy freaking Lucy. That right there. Let's see what it's all about. It's hot. They also tell you that though. Kind of dry, not gonna lie. I thought it'd be juicier. It's like the dry Lucy. Wow. I don't know. You want some? Try it. Yeah, right? It's like the cheese is gone. I don't know what's going on here, but to be fair, to get the original Juicy Lucy or whatever the fuck, you go to Matt's or the 5A Club, right? Those are like the originals. So here at the airport, maybe I'm not really doing it justice, but I don't know. I know how I feel about that. And now my fries are gone. Anyways, I got a flight to catch.
Sinclair Lewis once wrote, She was snatched back from a dream of far countries and found herself on Main Street. A poet's reminder that we're never too far from our roots, no matter if entrenched or dubious. Whether you stay or go, life is what you make of it through the courses you chart, the scars you pick up, the people that help you grow along the way. What will be of Morgan and I, only the future will tell. A future forever cemented by these tiny moments immersed in that sweet Minnesota life, along the route of our very own Main Street. Music